Hi, I'm Gronny Maguire, and I guess I'm so hard-working, down-to-earth, yet relatable because I've read Ivanka Trump's The Trump Card, and here's five lessons I've learned from the experience. It's so inspirational. You learn how to overcome the odds stacked against you. For example, here she is. She's 25 and she's on her way to the first boardroom meeting as a member of the board of Trump Entertainment Resorts, she says. The whole way to the meeting, it felt to me as if my appointment to the board was stacked against me. I was young and inexperienced. I was a woman and I was Donald Trump's daughter. <sighs> If she can overcome those odds to make it in the Trump organisation, you can overcome anything. She loves her career as a teen model because she did it all by herself. Um, which is interesting. It would all be on me. Either designers or photographers would like the way I looked or they wouldn't. No designer was going to put an unattractive girl into his show because of who her father is. But Vanka, do you really think that's true? I mean, you get in a, a Tommy Hilfiger campaign when you're 15. Was that just through sure grit and determination to rise to the top of the teen model industry? So Ivanka has this story from her childhood that she remembers really well, where she built a house made out of Lego and then she glued it together and she took it as a sign that she was always meant for real estate but then she talks to her brothers and they said oh no that happened to me that's my memory so next time they meet up with their dad they say settle it which one of us glued all the Lego together and he said sorry kids you're all wrong that was actually my story so he went on to explain that he'd written about the incident in his first book, The Art of the Deal, which must have been where I'd gotten the story in the first place. My brothers too. We'd all read Dad's books as soon as we were old enough, and we must each have found a point of connection in this story. That's normal, isn't it? Like, reading your dad's biography so often that you get confused between fact and fiction, and what happened to you, and what happened to him, and it all sort of moulds together and you don't know what's real anymore. That's normal. If you're somebody who's experienced prejudice because of who they are or what they look like, don't worry. Ivanka has not only experienced that, she's overcame it. We go to the chapter where a CEO rings her up. The conversation goes fine, but then he, just before he hangs up, he goes, Miss Trump, he started in, I must confess, when our friend suggested I contact you, I was very confused. Uh-oh. Ivanka replies, why is that? I said, I suspected, I already knew the answer, but I played along. It's because she's experienced this prejudice before. He continues, I was under the impression that you were only a model. <gasps> oh my God, Ivanka's going to lose it. Let's see how she responds. Yet, it didn't bother me at all. Not even for a split second. Why? Well, I was used to it for one thing. I have a tough skin for another and enough confidence in myself and my abilities not to worry too much about being underestimated or dismissed because of my last name, my youth or my modelling background. She's so inspiring. She's like a blonde Maya Angelou. Just in case you think that her life was all perfect, there are some chapters where she describes some of the most embarrassing awful things that happened to her. Like the time that Michael Jackson came to her ballet recital and all her friends got overexcited and they wanted to wear one glove on one hand as a tribute to him and then the teachers found out and they got really mad and then everybody, she felt like she caused all the problems and she said, for a short-lived moment, I wish like hell that I had been born in another set of circumstances, far away from the spotlight. I couldn't help think it was aimed at me, even when it wasn't. That must have been so hard. I mean, when I remember probably the most embarrassing thing happened to me when I was about 15 was I made up a story. The room in our secondary school was haunted by three girls that did the Ouija board and then were doomed and one by one died in suspicious circumstances and that I was the only one who could save them because I was in contact with their their souls that couldn't rest and eventually our head teacher had to give a special assembly to say it wasn't true. So in many ways we're similar. <laughs>